Hey everybody, this is Sage Valentine, aka Etherblade, and this is my review of The Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 13, Alone. The title alone has a huge significance in this episode because quite a few of the characters are left alone, feel alone, and may have to go through this apocalypse alone. So, here we go. Um, the episode opens with Bob walking by himself and we get to, you know, see exactly how he survived and I could understand why he was an alcoholic during that time because he watched two groups that he was with just die off and he was always the last person left. In the beginning, I was a little skeptical of that. I thought, you know, maybe he had something to do with that, but now at this moment i'm not exactly sure about that i'm still holding on to that idea that there's something dark in bob but this episode kind of gives me a you know the benefit of the doubt for him he found daryl and glenn by chance when he gave up and the coolest part of that whole scene was when they asked him do you have any questions for us and he said he said it doesn't matter who you are in other words you guys just found me, you saved me, I'm happy, let's go. And so they went. Beth, Sasha, and Maggie, um, Beth, Sasha, and Maggie, sorry. Bob, Sasha, and Maggie, I don't know why I put Beth down there. Beth is in this episode, but not in this scene. Um, they all took out the walkers together, each one in their own badass way. Sasha was killing it, <laughs> literally. And um, Bob was pretty cool with his one arm, and Maggie just took out all her rage on every single one that came along with that fog. And seeing them all standing in like a triangle back to back to back was scary. I just, for some reason, after seeing that clip on Amazon, on uh, AMC's, you know, the app, I just knew that Bob was a goner and it was a done deal. Um, you know... Bob and Sasha are in love. They've been in love since last season, and I think that's so cute of all the ships because, you know, we have Dixon, Raccoon, Bethel, um, Daryl, I mean, uh, Bethel, Carol. We have all these ships, but there's really no name for Bob and Sasha unless you call it Basha or Sav, but I'm just going to call them Basha. I think Basha is the most adorable ship at all of them, and it's just cool to see them in love like it's, it's so sweet Tyrese would be so happy if he sees if he saw this um I'm getting good at this pretty soon I won't need you Beth says as Daryl teaches her how to use the bow and you know he's teaching her tracking so she can learn on her on her own and what happens is that Beth sees a walker by himself and she never looks down and walks right into a trap and the trap gets caught on her foot and she's down Daryl has to take out that walker so basically at the moment, Beth is incapacitated. Daryl has to carry her, and he carries her towards this graveyard. And they stand, and they mourn this person that was born in 1830-something and died in 1860-something. Like, it was weird. And they hold hands, and this was just so Bethel-centric. And I know Bethel was, like, going crazy because it's yet another Bethel episode, so I know your ship is just sailing and waving those flags high. <laughs> um... <laughs> Daryl said, yeah, he was like, keep on tracking you before that. Um, let's see what else happened. Um, Bob, Sasha, and Maggie make it to that terminus sanctuary for all those who arrive, survive, sound. That weird sign that I, I'm iffy about. And Sasha feels the same way. Maggie wants to go there and find it because she thinks that Glenn will be there. Um... Sasha, on the other hand, is completely against it. I can understand her reasoning why, irrespective to what's being said on social media. I get why, because considering what they've been up against, especially with that fog and those zombies, I wouldn't go anywhere near it. I'd be as far away from it as I possibly could. And Bob reveals that he heard when they were on, when, uh, you know, it was a big crew with uh, Tyrese, Daryl, Bob, and um, Sasha, and they all went out in Michonne. I don't think Sasha would as Michonne. And they all went out to the veterinary hospital. And um, they heard that transmission that Daryl was trying to fix the thing. And that's how they got caught with the zombies under the car. Um, he admits hearing that. And I remember hearing it in the previous seasons over and over again. I kept saying, you know, 
who the heck is that person and who are they what are they talking about you really couldn't hear them they said something about sanctuary and something else but i guess we're gonna meet whomever that is very very soon so maggie swears glenn is there bob wants to go sasha like i said is leery she doesn't want to go i don't blame her but um they don't know what they're going to come up against with that. And I'm kind of iffy. I don't think anybody's going to see what Terminus is until the end of the season. Like, they're really going to make us work for that. So, Daryl and uh, Beth find a house. It's clean. It's well taken care of. It, it's beautiful. It must be like a funeral home where they keep the bodies and they clean the bodies and everything. And they go in the basement and they, they I think they see a body in a... um. A body in a um a casket, and Daryl goes as to like he touches the face, and like some makeup comes off. I guess they airbrush makeup on them like a dead zombie and trying to make them look human so they could bury them. Um, there are bodies in the basement. It looked like somebody dressed up these bodies to make them, I guess, prepared for burial. Beth thinks it's beautiful. Daryl is leery, but Daryl's, I'm going to call it his Daryl Dar. The Daryl Dar is, like, off around Beth. Like, maybe if he was with Michonne, he would notice stuff, but he's starting to miss a lot of things. I think he has feelings for Beth, but he's, like, off his game completely in this. Um... Sasha wants to stop walking and, like, she doesn't think it's a good idea, like I said. She's been adamant against it since the beginning of the episode. She's talking to Box. She said, you know what, you're hurt. Glenn may not even be alive, and we have six bullets. I don't think we should do this. Bob is hopeful and positive, and he thinks that, that Sasha feels like they should find higher ground, set up, and see if they can talk Maggie into it. We're back to that house, and there's very little food. They're searching through all the cupboards, and they find food in one cupboard. It's, um... Diet soda, pig's feet, peanut butter, jelly, and um, I think that might be it. And Daryl calls it the white trash brunch here. Hey, my grandfather used to eat pig's feet all the time, so <laughs> guess he was too. Um, Daryl notices that there's something wrong. He said, maybe we should take some food and leave the rest. Now, again, this is Daryl's, Daryl Dar going off, woo, woo, but being around Beth and Beth and her blind optimism is blinding him in such a way it's messing him up completely. So, um, Beth is like playing the piano. No surprise. Daryl's laying in an open coffin. He's listening to her sing. Um, he says, she was like, well, I thought that you hated hearing me sing. He said, he said, there ain't no juice box. So, hey. To me, this is too perfect. Like, I'm way, like, this entire episode when I was just watching it, I'm like, something's gonna happen. Because this is just too perfect. They set this up too nicely. Sasha wakes up, sees Bob staring at a message that Maggie left saying, don't risk your life to help me. Just go, I said, good luck. Maggie, um, Bobby just, like, kind of down about it. My thing is, why the hell is Maggie running off? Like, I understand she wants to find Glenn, but there's strength in numbers. You do not run off by yourself in any way. Hasn't anybody learned this in this episode? Probably not. In this season? Probably not. But I'm just saying, not a good idea. Bob and Sasha decide to follow the tracks, even though Sasha's like, listen, let's go find a place to stay. Bob is like, no, we're going to find her. Maggie is walking on the tracks alone. She sees a sign, the same one that Carol and Tyrese and the kids saw. And um, she kills this walker. She guts her, takes that blood. And at this point, I'm not sure what she's doing, but she's gutting that person. So Sasha asked Bob, she's like, you so happy to be alive, then why are we walking to the heart of, the heart of darkness? Sasha's basically questioning his optimism like he's so happy. Bob is basically happy, as he said, because he has people around him. Because he spent all that time by himself, only to get another group by himself. And he even thinks that, um, he said that sometimes Sasha, when they see the body that's dead, the zombie that's dead that Maggie just killed, he's like, sometimes you're just as bullheaded as she is. He's telling Sasha that she's as bullheaded as Maggie and they see the message Maggie left. Daryl's carrying Beth to the table, 
and they're gonna enjoy peanut butter and pig's feet and diet soda which diet soda will kill you but I'm not gonna here to preach it to you but I'm like of all the sodas for them to leave them and they leave them diet soda diet soda is the worst but hey, if you like it, you like it. So something rustles the can outside. And they see this cute one-eyed white dog. And Daryl's trying to get it to come in. And the dog gonna come in. Now, this is sign number two. Okay? Clean house, food, clean doggy appears out of nowhere. Daryl Dar, again, not on because Beth is so shiny, happy people the whole time that it's just like, Daryl's off, and I'm saying it's suspect. Sasha wakes up, and Bob is, like, sleeping, and I think Sasha's just sitting up by herself. Bob's sleeping, then he wakes up. They hear growling, and there's, like, a walker maybe about two or three hundred feet away. We don't see it, but we hear it just going, Rrr! the whole time. I'm like, damn, I couldn't sleep with that sound, man. Let alone sleeping outside, but that one sound would drive me crazy. So Bob can't sleep, said that he didn't sleep much when he was alone. Sasha basically tells him, you know, to try, you need to heal. So try to sleep. Bob questions whether, he, whether Sasha thinks that Ty is alive or dead. Because Sasha asked him, what the hell are we doing out here, Bob? Um, He likes Sasha, which I think, like I said, Sasha or Basha is just the cutest cutest little ship ever yes a lot of people don't like ships but i think it's kind of cute that they still are kind of have those um human feelings and those normal feelings of love and stuff i think it's just adorable so um beth wants to leave a note to thank the people for leaving food now again common sense would tell you if those people are leaving food for you um they don't plan on you either living that long or this is a trap but Beth and her, we are the world, kumbaya thing. Hey, Beth. Daryl wants to stay there, stick around, and, you know, Beth asks, oh, what made you change your mind? And I'm thinking Daryl is falling for her. I know Beth was going crazy, like, oh, our ship is sailing, ship is sailing. I wonder what's going to happen when Miss Michonne comes back. I'm hating on your ship. I'm not hating on your ship. <laughs> Bethel, I'm not hating on your ship. I'm just saying it's going to be a mess again because it's Rickle, Bethel, and thing, and a, just a hot mess. And my suspicions were correct because Daryl goes to the door and hears that rustling again. Here's the dog barking outside, thinks that it's the dog, goes to the door, and what does he see? A herd of zombies at the door. And I'm saying, who the hell let these zombies in here? Like, this goes back to my thing I thought about Merle. For some reason in season one, call me crazy, but I could have sworn in season one, I had the weirdest feeling that Merle got mad at them for leaving him on that um roof. And when he drove past there, I guess he drove some zombies or led some walkers to that camp. Just saying. I even think he led those zombies. For some reason, I thought he led the zombies to the um Herschel's farm. That's me and my conspiracy theories, so just... Bear with me, but it just seemed like that to me. So, all these walkers are at the door pushing through. Beth comes and she brings his um his crossbow and she passes it to him. He's trying to get him, but there's like fifty za fifty walkers. Now, if it was like maybe a couple at the door, fine, but somebody led those walkers to that door because it's a huge, huge, huge crowd here. Who the hell led them there? So, um. Daryl and Beth end up running. Daryl tells her to get her stuff and run outside. Daryl somehow gets to the basement where they embalm the bodies. He's able to hold off the, the walkers, stabbing as many as he can, pushing that that um table into them. It pushes his other table into him, stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. By the time he gets out, because he barely escapes, he's, he's like looking around trying to look for Beth. He sees her bag on the ground. And he sees a Cadillac slowly pulling away. Like I said from last um, video, from the last video that I did, I told you somebody was watching them and my sediments were exact to a T that somebody was watching them and they definitely were. So um, we see Bob and Sasha, they're still walking. Maggie leaves a few more messages. 
Yes, Daryl is capable. I believe Daryl can kick ass by himself, but I just don't like him being alone. And he's so exhausted. And then when, like, those guys find him, we find out that those guys were the ones that were in the house with, um, Rick. So my question, and this is another far-fetched idea of mine, and if you disagree, definitely let me know, but... Apparently, these people have been following them since they've been running. If not following them from the beginning. See, the problem with this show? Clues, Easter eggs, rocks, breadcrumbs, whatever you want to call it. These people didn't just pop up. So somewhere along the line, they saw them. So I'm wondering, did they ransack that golf course thingy? Maybe, may, but I'm starting to think that this whole crew is no longer in Georgia. Like, did they get turned around when they were running and are they going north? Because there was that spoon that said DC on it about the White House. So, were those dead senators and, and uh, other people who are, uh, what's the word, uh, affluent, wealthy from DC? Maybe that's where they are, so... Just saying. So, um, Daryl, for some reason, ends up joining this crew. I don't know who the hell these people are. And I'm just like, who the hell are these guys? But I'll get to that part because I'm ahead of myself. So, like I said, Daryl's exhausted. Sasha sees a building. She's trying to make this plan. Bob is like, no, we're going to find Maggie. And I'm like, Bob, Bob, please don't split up. I'm like, come on. Oh my gosh, and then I'm just like, Walking Dead, like seriously, you kill one, they bring another one, now you're gonna to split up one of the cutest little ships on the show, like, don't kill the black people, yes, yes, I said it, because Walking Dead has this issue with killing one black person to get another black person on there, I'm just like, come on, please, do not kill Bob and Sasha this way, please, so they split up. Sasha's like, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to be alone again. I don't like them splitting up in this episode. I'm just like, no, no, the whole episode. Sasha enters the building alone. She sees nothing, so she just lays her stuff down. She looks outside, sees some dead bodies laying near an ice cream truck, bumps into this window, and it falls, and it breaks, and the cavalry comes out. The welcoming committee comes out in the form of like a handful of walkers. And some of them come out of the building where Sasha is. Thank God, because Sasha would have been sleep woken up and zombies would have been trying to eat her. So it was a good thing this happened. And Maggie jumps up, laying down, sees a walker. She's fighting. And even before this, we realized that Sasha was lying. Sasha's afraid. She tried to play that off the whole time, but she was scared. She starts crying. I'm like, yes, I get to see human Sasha here. Um... She races out to help Maggie, and Maggie, she ends up being surrounded. She jumps on the car and just takes him out like a boss. Yes, like a boss. She and Maggie take all the walkers together. Maggie found more than she wanted for what she's saying. Like, she was looking for another one to leave a, a message, and she heard Sasha talking to Bob, and she just decided that... um she just wanted to go, and she said that Glenn is alive. She's She was waiting for Sasha, and Sasha admits she was afraid. She was like, I know you were afraid. These men that I was just talking about, they the ones that were in the house with Rick, that Rick narrowly escaped, they come to see Daryl, and Daryl just doesn't give a damn. He's going to kill this dude who wants his bow, and even though the other guys have guns and bows and knives, he's going to kill me. just doesn't care. But the guy, he and the guy, I guess, become kind of friendly, and I guess Daryl's a part of this new crew here. I know who the crew is, but I'm not going to give it away to you, because a lot of you guys haven't watched, haven't read the comics, so you have no idea, but I'm just saying, just saying. So, um, Joe Cole says, tells Daryl, a bow man's a bow man through and through. I'm like, well, Daryl just got a friend, but does Daryl know who he's messing with? Considering with Beth, Beth messed up the Daryl Dar, so why hurt yourself when you can hurt other people, he says. Bob is alone again following the tracks, and all of a sudden he meets up with Sasha and Maggie. I'm like, now this is the first time this season when it's like happy face smiles. Like at the end of an episode, and I like it. I'm only wondering about next episode, is it just going to be crazy and a hot mess? Probably. 
So we see that sign as survivors, all who are alive, survive. And guess who found it? Glenn. But Glenn's by himself. Where the hell's Eugene? Where's Abraham? Where's Rosita? Where is Tara? Did they get separated or did something happen? Hopefully next episode, probably in the next episode, they will show us exactly what happened because I'm wondering what happened between them, honestly. It's kind of weird, so. Um, as far as this episode goes, this is my favorite episode because nothing was too... Um, I wasn't expecting anything. Like, I'm skeptical of every episode of The Walking Dead until they end it. Honestly, every show that I watch, I'm skeptical until I see the end of the show. So, I'm pretty much kind of iffy. But this episode was definitely awesome. And the fact that Daryl met up with those guys. In fact, I'm sorry, guys. But I'm just going to tell you who those guys are. And hopefully I don't spoil it because I'm just going to know. Those guys are hunters. Okay? They are hunters. Look up on Wiki, the Walking Dead Wiki. You'll find out who these guys are. They are hunters. That's all I'm going to say. At least I think they're hunters. Because they seem like those characters. But that's all I'm going to say. The next um, episode, we get to see uh, Raccoon, Rick, Daryl, and Carl. Rick, Michonne, and Carl. And we get to see um, Lily, Mika... And uh, Judith and Tyrese and Carol. So, since we had a nice little ray of sunshine this episode to blind out that darkness of Beth being taken away, we are in for it next episode. So, this is my favorite episode, guys. I'm a happy camper. I know Bethel is going crazy. Raccoon, your time is coming. And Dixon, do not give up because your time is coming. And carolers 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 i'm not even sure because for some and I'm, i don't want to break your hearts but for some reason i don't think carol's gonna make it out this season because she didn't show up to comic-con this year because she got sick but i feel like carol may not make it out this season carol i think it's gonna be the following characters may not make it out this season and i'm dead ass Carol, Maggie, or Glenn, Sasha maybe, Bob maybe, and those little girls may not make it out. Just saying. But Carol, your time may come though. Who knows? These writers are writing up and Scott Gimple is an open mind and he is killing it with these stories. So we'll see. So just tune in next week, guys. And thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is a Sage Valentine, a.k.a. Etherblade at SageValentine, Twitter.com. The truth is WordPress and I hope you can handle it on blogger.com. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful Monday. Stay tuned for my review of the following and yeah, so bye guys. <laughs>